Hey everybody, I wanted to split my nonfiction reviews for Nonfiction November into two chunks so you don't have to listen forever and ever and ever. Uh, so here we go. The Some of them I've already returned to the library, so I apologize. I can't show you all of them. The first one that I'm going to talk about is Drown City, Hurricane Katrina and New Orleans. And it's a graphic novel illustrated and written by Don Brown. This was a really good graphic novel. I remember living through, uh, watching Hurricane Katrina and all the aftermath on, on the TV. Uh, I remember Oprah talking about it in the specials. I remember sending money. I remember being frustrated, but this book really amped back all those feelings. It, it reminded me how, how alone and isolated those people must have felt, how abandoned and how we need to do a lot more to prevent that from happening again. And with some of the other climate change books that I've been reading this month, it's not very <laughs> heartening as far as I think it, it will happen again. And so we need to figure out how to better manage catastrophes like that. So I really appreciated it. There were a couple times I had to halt while I was reading it just because the images just were so stark and blunt and cut you a little bit to your core. So, yeah, definitely not not for younger readers to handle, but it was a really good read, and I, I even had, I think at the back of the book, some suggestions for other nonfiction books that would help accompany your experience if you want to learn more. So I always appreciate that when they do that. The second book was Rad Woman Worldwide by Kate Schatz, and this was, uh, I also read Wonder Woman, which is similar in in scope. <laughs> and it's basically women who have been ignored, some of them not, but more ignored in history and some really great artistic renderings, but also just a little bit, bit of a backstory. So you can kind of whet your appetite for learning more about some of these amazing women and what they did for science and art and sports and activism and art. And yeah, I just, I really appreciated it. I think I preferred the rad woman worldwide. And I know there's also an American version as well, um, of just American women. And I, I, I love looking for hero and heroine books. Uh, I think it's really important to have around. These would be great for coffee table books or to give as Christmas gifts to that budding feminist in your life or, um, yeah, that teenager girl that you want to inspire. So I think it was pretty great. One of the books, which I'm pretty sure Wonder Woman was the book that did this, had a lot of parentheticals, which I think it took a lot away from the actual telling. Uh, I know they were trying to squeeze a lot of information in, but it was just, I love parentheticals when I'm writing probably more than I should, but this was just overkill. So I prefer the Red Woman worldwide if you have to make a choice. The next book I read was Sixth Extinction by Elizabeth Colbert, and this book not only did it have a great cover, it was yellow with a skeleton of a mammoth on it, but uh, this book I've heard about a lot on Book Riot podcasts that I listen to. I've seen it a couple places on BookTube, and I've been meaning to get to it for a long time. But the science of it, honestly, was a little bit intimidating just because that's not my forte. I did not need to be scared off at all. It was very approachable. I think it was, it was under 300 pages. And... The premise behind this is the five major extinctions that our planet has suffered before that have culminated in, you know, extreme loss of multiple species is coming up to a head with our sixth big extinction that humans are in fact causing and also might be exterminated from. So not to be an alarmist, <laughs> but it was a little alarming and I really appreciated how well they explained the science behind it, how much they it talked about the repercussions of it, and um, yeah, backed up what they were saying. Yeah, I think it's a really good one to pick up if you are interested in climate change, if you're interested in conservation at all, and what that is looking like or not looking like. Yeah, good read. <sighs> the next ones I actually still have. Um, this is the Loving My Actual Life, an experiment in relishing what's right in front of me by Alexandra Kui Kendall, I think is how you say her name. And it was okay. I really loved the cover. Uh, I've been very much into intentional living and I thought it was going to be a cool one to pick up. 
and it was. I just feel like I've read a lot of other books that do it better. So if you don't know anything about intentional living, especially as a mom, it's a good one. But it, otherwise, yeah, maybe skip it. Um, she talks a lot about action steps. She breaks up her for her months into different things that she wants to focus on, whether it's uh, minimizing clutter in her house, minimizing uh, extra time that she's spent wasting on things. And it was good, but it wasn't life altering by any scope of the imagination. The next one I did a whole video on, so you can check that one out if you want and I'll leave it below, but it's, I will find you a reporter investigates the life of the man who raped her by Joanna Connors. This I think is a must read, must, must, must read. It was, it's about, like it says, a woman coming to grips with her, her rape, what it did to her and her family. It talks about what made her rapist the person he was. And it, it was, it was very hard to read at certain points. Uh, especially as a, as a woman, <laughs> you, you, we've all suffered as far as feeling threatened from such situ different situations, or we know somebody who's been through even worse than us, but she had it pretty bad. And I appreciated the candor she spoke with, but also the respect and her her worldview about trying to work through it without hate and anger and um, not saying she didn't get angry. I'm not saying that at all, but I think she was trying to find a constructive way to deal with her, what had happened to her instead of pushing it under the rug, instead of just getting angry and leaving it alone and not fighting through that to find something that I think is actually pretty beautiful on the other side. So yeah, I really highly recommend it. And the last one was Hibbley Elegy. It's actually the first one I read this month and it's by JD Vance. I read this the week before the election and I'm so thankful that I did. My father-in-law gave it to me and I'd heard about it on NPR beforehand. Uh, so I knew I wanted to pick it up. Uh, <laughs> I'm very thankful for this because if I hadn't had that book, I would have been a lot more angry and mean following the election, I think. Uh, this book helped me understand why certain people thought the way they did on things. It helped me understand a different demographic than I'm from. And it reminded me that, again, we are all a composite of the experiences and the people that have changed us. And what we do with that... <laughs> can can move forward positively or negatively. Uh, for him, he used it and thankfully had a couple people in his life who believed in him. And so he moved forward in a very positive way. But a lot of the people in his family or in his social circles didn't have the same experience. And talks about kind of like the numbers <laughs> of escaping that and, and what it's like to try and get out of uh, a lower class, poor, uh, white, Appalachian kind of mentality. Uh, and he goes back even generations. So you, un, I, it really, really was illuminating as far as understanding how the last few generations have starkly changed because of our abilities to move away from our, our families of origin and not having that support there and not being able to work through things and industrialization and jobs leaving and it was really, really good book. It packed a big punch for being under 300 pages. And I, I, again, really recommend it, especially if you are similarly devastated by the election. I think it, it helped give me a lot of empathy for those who saw differently than me. I don't agree with, with their choices, but I can understand them. And I think that's the first step. So that is the first half of my nonfiction November reading. I am currently reading Climate Changed, which is a very thick graphic novel on climate change. It's very good. I'm also reading Wolf by Wolf, which is not nonfiction, uh, but I'm doing that as a buddy read, uh, which is really, really fun. Uh, break from it. <laughs> and I have a couple other, I have lots of really good ones coming up next week that I plan on picking up. I want to pick up The Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. I want to pick up um, Sex and Girls by Peggy Ornstein. And there was a couple other ones that I'm wanting to pick up in the next week. Mighty Be Our Powers. It will be the next week, week and a half. I'm going to see how many more I can fit in because uh, I'm really enjoying nonfiction November. But December, I think I'm going to do the epic tomes and 
topple your tomes challenge. So we'll see how that goes. That might be a, another quick video with a tag. So I hope this helped you guys kind of get an understanding of what I've been reading lately. Oh, I forgot the last one. Don't, don't go away yet. Steal like an artist. You have to read this book. Um, I can't believe it, it got shoved into the pi pile. Steal like an artist is by <laughs> Austin Cleon. And I definitely want to pick this one up. It would make a great gift for anybody, you know, uh, it's great for creative people and it's especially great for people who don't think they're creative. I think everybody is. Um, but he has some great action steps for trying to break more into your, your inspiration, uh, part of your brain and bust out something that you can make different and make it better. And I loved it. it I read it in one bath sitting, like not sitting, but bath laying, lying. I don't know. I really appreciated it and I'm really excited. Ariel Bissett had mentioned it on her channel, so I've been meaning to pick it up for a long time. But yes, if you are a, a YouTuber especially, I think this is great because a lot of times it's hard to figure out what content to make, what to cut, what to <laughs> shy away from. Uh, you don't want to copy. You want to be your own person. And I think this this was pretty great. Pretty, very timely read for me as I kind of develop my channel. So what are you reading for nonfiction November? Have you read any of these? Do you want to discuss them? Because I have so many thoughts I want to discuss and I'm really excited about them. Yes. So put it in the comments. Comments are my favorite part. So if you're watching, again, I want to encourage this to anybody. If you're watching and you don't do a channel or you don't comment, start. Uh, that was my first step towards making this channel was, was getting on and just commenting on people's videos and stepping out because your voice matters. We actually care what you think about what we're putting out and we want to hear what you have to say. Even if you're not agreeing with us, we would love to hear that because it gives us that conversation back and forth that we really crave as creators. So yes, I'm encouraging you to step out of your shell if you are not currently out. <laughs> so I'll talk to you guys later. Happy nonfiction. Bye.